Welcome back to the garage. Back working on the airplane. And what we're going to build today is a wing rib. Specifically the uh, rear section of it that goes behind the uh, front spar. And this is what it'll look like when it's done. I am building the truss style original ribs for it. They came out with some that are made out of a single piece here. And it's stamped. And I have some cut out holes to lighten it up but the thing I liked about the truss ones is they're just kind of cool to build they're really light strong and you can pretty much make them out of scrap metal I mean you have to have the right kind of aluminum for it but just drop pieces that you've cut off something else can be used instead of thrown away to build some of the parts of the rib so the first thing you need to have is a jig and this has got this section was cut out and then screwed onto another board so you have a groove all the way around that you can put the downward bent parts of the rib in and then these here mark where the reinforcements go like in it it all gets riveted together. You can either use the 8th inch pull type rivets, which is what I'm using, or you can save a little money and use the, I think it's 3 seconds solid rivets. Pull type rivets aren't terribly expensive and they're really fun to put in when you have a pneumatic rivet gun. So the first thing we're going to do is take strips of metal and I cut out the strips ahead of time, just buzz this off a piece of uh this is 60 61 20 thousandths and i'll buzz this off a sheet and make a stack of them and some people actually build all the individual parts all at once and then they start assembling ribs i just build each piece as i build the rib it's however you want to do it but we'll take this we'll put this in the groove that groove is a half inch deep which is what i need for this piece, so we'll stick it in the groove. I'll take a marker, mark along it, and then we'll take it over and bend that into a 90 degree piece. All right, this piece has been cut to length with the top edge, it is down in the slot. I'll just mark it with the Sharpie and that gives me a bend line. Then we'll take it over to the metal brake. The metal brake makes these long bends in this stuff super easy. Because there for a while I was trying to find inventive ways of bending them. And I could get it done, but this is just easier and better. Now we have the bend in it. Okay, here's the piece on the board. As you can see, it is straight. And it needs to follow this line here. So what we'll do is we'll run this side through the shrinker and start working it around till that curves around there nicely. That will leave this surface flat down in the groove because this needs to be nice and flat because this is what the skin will be riveted to. Look like this. There'll be a line of holes down through this when it's done. And this blue one is the shrinker yellow one is a metal stretcher and what this does it has a set of jaws here if you're not familiar with these it grabs it grabs the material and then pushes it together as you push that lever down grabs it and pushes it so what we'll do is we'll just start working this around slowly bend it As you can see already, it's taking a nice curve. It's just a matter of going back and forth between the shrinker and the jig until you've got that curve to where it fits in that groove nicely. And there it is in the form. I'm gonna make it, keep working it to where it drops down in there as nice and easy as possible. It's trying to raise up just a little here. Remember when you put these braces in, they will hold everything straight. If the rib is a little bit 
warped when you get it done you can always shrink or stretch this edge very gently and straighten it right back out because you want to have them as straight as possible so your rivet lines or you you'll make your rivet line straight but then you have to get the rib in line with the rivet line so the straighter the rib is the better off you'll be now the next thing we need to do is build another piece for the bottom this bottom's the same deal Put an angle in it, drop it in there. There's a little bit of a kick up at the back, so we'll use the shrinker right in here to curve it around, and then that piece will be ready. You can see here this front edge, it's got a bend going down that will hook to the spar, bend coming back to where it rivets to the rest of the rib, and then a little kick up here for a reinforcement. So I have cut a piece out to go in there on the bandsaw and I won't get to what I do I run them vertically on the belt center to clean out both edges and then we'll uh, mark it and bend it okay the two bends are made in that it's fit in there and we'll drill some holes eighth inch for those uh, pull type rivets and what you want to do is put those side by side toward the inside back toward this because some of these ribs will be notched something like that to go around the uh, angle on the spar carry through so you don't want to be cutting your rivets off yeah i went ahead and drilled those holes put a couple of clecos in you could just go ahead and cut everything else out and then do all the drilling at once but i just kind of like to uh fasten everything down as i build it and put it on the uh jig just personal preference and the piece on the end of the rib is built the same way with a half inch bend going down into the jig. Wide piece there and then a little quarter inch kick up for reinforcement. It's in just like that. We'll go ahead and drill and Clico it in place. Okay, that's drilled and clico Now we are down to the two vertical supports and the three diagonals. And as you can see on this finished rivet, these are all U-channels. They're like three-eighths inch wide in the bottom with quarter-inch kick-ups on both sides. And while all of this so far has been made out of 20,000 sheet, all of these are made out of 16. So like before, I've just got strips cut out. I will bend them on the brake, get them fitted over here, and drilled in Clico. And when I mentioned earlier that you can make some of these strips and pieces out of leftover material, this is the original turtle deck I tried to make that I didn't like and took off and it's made out of 16,000 sheets so I've been just cutting strips off of it and uh, using it for the ribs so nothing's wasted. The U pieces are nice and simple to make. I went and like, like before I edge sanded them on the belt sander and I just marked a quarter inch in on each side and we'll just make two bends and we'll have a U channel. There we go. Plenty good enough for me. We'll go drill it and Clico it. Okay, everything is fit, drilled. So now it's time to peel it up off the board and start deburring all of the holes. One thing I like to do is to put a little mark on the top of these so I, there's no chance I can get them turned around when I go to riveting. So now we'll pull the Clecos out, we'll just disassemble it, deburr it, and we can start ripping. Okay, everything is apart, everything's been deburred, the corners rounded off, so no sharp parts. So now we'll put it back together with Clecos. All right, I've got one Clico in each end of the, each piece, and that makes it pretty rigid. But when we rivet, there's two in each end, so this thing will not be able to move either direction. 
So now we'll start pulling Clecos out and dropping rivets in. One of these pull type rivets are, like I said, more expensive. I think they're more fun to install. <laughs> Especially with the pneumatic rivet gun. I went to Harbor Freight to pick up the pick up a gun when I first started this project. I couldn't find one on the shelf. So I asked the guy uh, He had any in bag. He's like, no, nah, they were out. He's like, well, we've got some real nice hand rivet guns. And I'm like, yeah, I'm building an airplane with thousands of rivets. I think I'll pass. His eyes got big and he's like, I would too. And this rib is done. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a slight curvature, which when you were, you were putting the skin on, you could definitely pull the rib into place and get everything lined up. Because what you do is you've got your hole drilled in the skins and then you mark the center line down there and you pull it and drill to the center. But I'm gonna take this and just slightly stretch this to where this is nice and flat. And that's got it. I'll lay it on a flat surface over here. Oh yeah, nice and flat. All right, that's it for a rib. I think I have probably six or seven more of these to build and then I will have all of the rear ribs done. And the next video on ribs will start on the fronts. They have a similar structure to this, the curved pieces, but they have a formed uh, piece there for the very nose that will make a wooden form to build it and will hammer form those. And We'll start fabricating those. Right now, I'm done for tonight. Got another rib out of the way. It looks good. Thanks for watching.